Welcome to our presentation on infectious diseases for ABIM review. Part 1. Certain infections require additional tests. For bacteremia caused by Streptococcus bovis or Clostridium septicum, necessitates a colonoscopy, while non-typhoidal salmonella calls for an HIV test. Candidemia, on the other hand, requires an ophthalmologic examination. When dealing with animal bites, empiric antibiotic therapy is crucial. The first-line treatment is amoxicillin clavulinate. It's important to add anaerobic coverage with metronidazole or clindamycin. Alternate regimens including doxycycline, moxifloxacin, or TMP-SMX. Staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome can occur with tampon use or nasal packing. Treatment involves supportive care and antibiotics, including vancomycin plus clindamycin to decrease toxin production. If the staph cause is uncertain, cefepime may be used. For skin abscesses, consider staph as a cause and treat with TMP-SMX or doxycycline. Most common infectious associated with tattooing is staph aureus. Ventilator-associated pneumonia requires using pseudomonas targeting agent like zosin combined with an MRSA agent such as vancomycin or linozolid. We should avoid daptomycin for lung infections. PJP infection is characterized by a high LDH level, above 50, and typically in the 400s. CT chest scans reveal diffuse interstitial infiltrates. Spontaneous pneumothorax can happen given thin-walled cavities, aiding in diagnosis. Carbapenems, including imipenem, meropenem, doropenem, and ertapenem, are the recommended treatment for beta-lactamase-producing bacteria. Syphilis can present in different stages. Latent syphilis is asymptomatic with positive serology. Primary syphilis manifests as a painless chancre with non-tender lymphadenopathy. Secondary syphilis presents with a diffuse maculopapular rash involving the palms and soles, condyloma lata, and mucus patches. Tertiary syphilis may involve gummas, cardiovascular complications such as aortitis slash aneurysm, and neurologic features like Tabes dorsalis and Argyle Robertson pupil. Diagnosis involves non-treponemal tests, RPR, VDRL, for screening and treponemal tests, FTA, ABS, TPPA, for confirmation. Treatment differs with stage, primary, secondary, and early latent. Benzathine penicillin, G2.4 million units, IMX1 dose, including for exposed partners within 90 days. Tertiary, no neurosyphilis, or late latent, benzathine penicillin, G2.4 million units IM weekly, X3 doses. Neurosyphilis, aqueous penicillin GIV for 10 to 14 days. A jarish herxheimer reaction may occur after starting therapy, presenting as an acute febrile reaction. Manage with supportive care such as acetaminophen. Neurosyphilis may show CSF leukocytosis but CSF VDRL can be negative in May's 70% of cases. A positive result supports the diagnosis, but a negative test does not rule it out. Treatment is IV aqueous crystalline penicillin G for 10 to 14 days. In penicillin allergy, perform a skin test. If positive, penicillin desensitization is required. Doxycycline can be used for primary or secondary syphilis, but is generally not preferred for tertiary disease. Follow-up involves repeating CSF every three to six months post-treatment, then every six months until the WBC count in CSF is normal and CSF VDRL is negative. Retreat the patient if these goals are not met within two years. After syphilis treatment, RPR VDRL titers should decline by all fourfold within six to 12 months. If titers remain persistently positive, it could indicate treatment failure with symptoms persisting then we need to evaluate for neurosyphilis and retreat. It could also be reinfection with new partner and new symptoms. We retreat based on disease stage. Another possibility is serofast state in which we have asymptomatic patient with titers drop but less than fourfold and remain low positive indefinitely. We don't need to retreat. We only repeat RPR in six months to confirm stability. Migratory polyarthritis in large joints is a sign of acute rheumatic fever following strep infection. Whereas in sexually active patient with rash pustule, migratory arthritis might be due to gonococcal arthritis. 
Infectious genital ulcers can be painful or painless. Painful ulcers present in herpes and hemophilus ducreae or chancroid. Herpes simplex virus, HSV, presents with vesicles or pustules that progress to shallow ulcers on an erythematous base, accompanied by tender lymphadenopathy. Systemic symptoms are common, whereas chancroid, hemophilus ducreae, characterized by large, deep ulcers with a gray-yellow base and soft, friable edges, associated with painful, suppurative lymphadenopathy. Painless ulcers are present in syphilis and chlamydia. Syphilis, treponema pallidum, manifests as a single indurated chancre with a hard, non-purulent base. Lymphogranuloma venarium, LGV, chlamydia trachomatis, L1, L3. Typically a small, shallow ulcer, often unnoticed, followed by painful, fluctuant inguinal lymphadenopathy, buboes. Last granuloma inguinale, by Klebsiella granulomatis, produces a painless, beefy red ulcer with tissue destruction and granulation tissue. It's rare in the United States. I used parts from the Physio, USMLE Library YouTube channel to help remember certain bacteria I found challenging, and I highly recommend checking them out for clear, concise explanations. Brucellosis, represented by Bruce Wayne, is caused by ingestion of unpasteurized dairy products or through direct contact with farm animals. It presents with undulant or intermittent fevers, hills in background, night sweats, arthralgia, and hepatosplenomegaly. Diagnosis is made using the Brucella agglutination serology test or blood cultures, though culture growth is slow. Treatment consists of doxycycline in combination with rifampin, represented by motorbike tires. Francisella tularensis, represented by Eiffel Tower in France, is maintained in a rabbit reservoir and transmitted to humans via tick or deer fly bites. It is endemic to regions such as Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma, where we have a lot of elderly people. Infection presents with ulcers at the inoculation site, enlarged lymph nodes, granulomas, conjunctivitis, and fever. Treatment involves aminoglycosides, represented by fishes, such as streptomycin or gentamicin. Pastorella infection is caused by cat or dog scratches, bites, or licking of open wounds. It typically presents with cellulitis, which can progress to tenosynovitis or osteomyelitis if untreated. The recommended treatment is penicillin, most commonly amoxicillin clavulinate. Yersinia pestis, known for causing bubonic plague, is transmitted by rodents and is common in California and Arizona, while Yersinia enterocolitica, often from dog feces, causes pseudoappendicitis which presents with nausea, vomit, and diarrhea. Treatment involves fluoroquinolones, with doxycycline for post-exposure prophylaxis. Nocardiosis can affect the lungs, skin, and CNS, presenting with pneumonia, cellulitis, or brain abscesses in immunocompromised individual. Diagnosis involves imaging and cultures as it's acid fast, while treatment requires TMP-SMX. Actinomyces resides in mouth, gut, and female genital tract, so infections can happen after dental procedure or IUD insertion, and infections are characterized by cervicofacial mass, aspiration pneumonia. Characteristic sulfur granules with sinus tracts are present. It can mimic malignancy or TB. Treatment involves high-dose penicillin, and distinguishing features include anaerobic growth and non-acid fast properties. Lemire's syndrome, caused by Fusobacterium, presents with persistent fever and neck swelling following a sore throat even after antibiotics. Diagnosis involves leukocytosis with imaging showing internal jugular thrombophlebitis, with treatment requiring four weeks of ampsulbactam or clindamycin. We interpret the tuberculin skin test based on induration size and patient risk factors. An induration of 5 mm or more is considered positive in high-risk individuals, including those with HIV, have had recent contact with active TB cases, have chest X-ray evidence of prior TB, are organ transplant recipients, or are otherwise immunosuppressed, such as patients on prednisone at 15 mg or more per day for at least a month. An induration of 10 mm or more is positive in intermediate risk groups such as recent immigrants within the last five years from high-prevalence countries, intravenous drug users, mycobacteriology laboratory workers, residents or employees of high-risk congregate settings like prisons, homeless shelters, and healthcare facilities, 
and children under four years old. An induration of 15 millimeters or more is positive for healthy individuals with no known risk factors. Treatment for active TB is the RIPE regimen, rifampin, isoniazide, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol for the first two months, followed by rifampin and isoniazide for an additional four months. We often remember this as RIPE for two, then RI for four. For latent TB, the preferred regimen is isoniazide for nine months. An alternative is rifampin daily for four months. Four days. Atypical mycobacterium avium complex infections require careful diagnosis with two positive sputum cultures. Biopsy is only done if second test is negative, whereas first was positive. Otherwise, no need for biopsy. Treatment includes macrolide, ethambutol, and rifampin, ensuring comprehensive management of the infection. Exposure to mycobacterium avium complex, often from hot tubs, can lead to lung issues. These are usually self-limited and resolve with supportive care, sometimes requiring a short course of prednisone for relief. Traveler's diarrhea is a common ailment for those venturing abroad, often caused by bacteria like Etec, Campylobacter, and Salmonella. For moderate to severe cases, treatment options include fluoroquinolones for adults and non-pregnant women, or azithromycin for children, pregnant women, and travelers to Southeast Asia, where quinolone-resistant Campylobacter is prevalent. Typhoid fever presents with fever, bacteremia, and relative bradycardia, especially in those who have recently traveled to endemic regions. As the disease progresses, patients may experience abdominal pain, liver function test elevation, and a distinctive macular rash known as rose spots. The most sensitive diagnostic test is a bone marrow culture. Neisseria infections can manifest in various ways, including purpura fulminans, which is a severe rash that can progress to necrosis, and adrenal insufficiency known as waterhouse friedrichsen syndrome. For those who have undergone splenectomy, vaccination is crucial 14 days before and after the procedure, with revaccination every five years. Testing for gonorrhea cure is not recommended within three weeks due to potential false positives in general public, except in pregnant women where testing is necessary after three weeks. Individuals exposed to Neisseria meningitidis, especially through droplet spread, require antimicrobial prophylaxis. This includes roommates, intimate contacts, child care workers, and those exposed to respiratory or oral secretions. Recommended prophylaxis options include rifampin, ciprofloxacin, or ceftriaxone. Bacterial meningitis requires prompt identification and treatment based on risk groups and common organisms. For those aged 2 to 50, streptococcus pneumonia and Neisseria meningitidis are common, treated with ceftriaxone and vancomycin. For those over 50, listeria can happen, requiring ceftriaxone and vancomycin plus ampicillin. Immunocompromised individuals are treated with cefepime with vancomycin and ampicillin. Those with neurosurgery or skull trauma need cefepime and vancomycin. Thank you for watching.